Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. We're going to go back and talk about technology, and specifically technology from more of a philosophical perspective. You can probably tell by the title that this video is vaguely based upon the title from a very, very controversial author. Industrial revolutions and societies in general have created a lot of heartache over the time. It's come in these large ebbs and flows where things get really, really rough for a period of time and then things abate and things stabilize a little bit and people are more comfortable with it. Right now we're living in a pretty cushy time as far as we would usually consider industrialized societies. There is a bit of upheaval, but generally life is pretty good. There's no one living in, or not many people in the United States living in absolute squalor. To create these types of industrial societies, though, you need a steady flow of really three things, which are materials to industrialize, having the right materials on hand, having the right knowledge on how to utilize those materials, and having the right drive among the population to take full advantage of the situation. So you need physical, metaphysical, or knowledge, or logos, if you will, and spiritual, which is the drive. And I'll put a little link in the, in the description down below that will link over to my website where I have a blog on this topic as far as the balance between physical, metaphysical, and spiritual being. Technology in general has caused us to surround our entire environments with material things, specifically things that we've made. Even if you look behind me, there's a wall in front of me is a camera and a computer monitor and a computer and all kinds of other stuff, all man-made. So we think of the world in terms of things that are material and it's caused us to change our mentality to a point where we assume that material things are the world. And you look at different philosophers and you see this come up from left to right. You've got Marx on the left, you've got Kaczynski on the right, and both of them really look at the world from the perspective of means of production and these physical man-made objects. And they assume that the material is the world. They both buy into this fundamental perspective on things. But material things cannot create. They require people behind them to actually create more things. And pushing out a worldview of material secularism, where you believe that the world is entirely material, is, in my opinion, doing the world a disservice. I saw this thing from Daniel Schmattenberger, and he's a person who's trying to work through the philosophical underpinnings of society as he sees technology slowing down. And one of the things that concerns him is looking at great military generals. When you look at generals, an awesome general, they'll win many decisive battles against all kinds of enemies. And then they'll teach the generation of generals below them the strategies that they used. Often these generals are pretty effective. They're able to deploy the strategies that their predecessor did, but usually not quite as well. And often their enemies are adapting during this phase. Eventually you get to the point where a couple generations down, they're copying things without having any understanding of the philosophical underpinnings of their predecessors and how they were able to mount such great strategies. Without that underpinning, they're unable to come up with new strategies that will work for them without scrapping 
what they were taught to begin with. The copying function gets corrupted. And this is true always. When you take a copy of a copy of a copy, it's often much, much, much worse. There's ways to overcome this, of course. It usually is energy intensive and expensive. But we have a problem. We're living in a society where we are copying, but we're not creating. And when we look out in the world, you see all kinds of new things. We're observing Sagittarius A, the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. But when was the last time we created something like an automobile or an airplane? When was the last time you saw of a real practical invention that came into your life. Now your cell phone sure is practical. It allows you to communicate in general. But it almost serves more as a distraction if you really look around the world. If you take a day and try consciously to avoid using your cell phone, it gives you a different perspective on the world. It's it's an advertising machine. You're looking into something that is just there to feed advertisements into your brain so that you will buy more stuff. More stuff that is far less revolutionary than an automobile. So when you look at these inventions, all of the great inventions, or a good portion of them, came from polymaths. And we hear this phrase, Jack of all trades, master of none. And the original phrase was Jack of all trades, master of one. Because it was a good thing to be a renaissance person, renaissance man. These polymaths brought amazing things in this world. You look at people like Leonardo da Vinci. He was great at art. He was great at biology. He invented things. You look at Isaac Newton. He had impacts in philosophy and mathematics and physics. Tesla, again, had knowledge in general physics. There's things like the Tesla valve, which you'll probably see YouTube videos on that are very interesting, dealing with fluid flow and gas flow. But he was also a master of electricity. And he made Thomas Edison look like a dunce. I think the reason why those great people of the past were able to excel so much in the world was because they were surrounded in a culture that was not so obsessed with the material, but actually looked at the world from varying perspectives. We know that it's true that being a polymath helps improve your performance. One of the great statistics is that scientists who know music or play an instrument are more productive. I think that there's studies floating around out there that, that touch on that topic. So I think our materialism is what is undermining our performance and making us less productive than the generations before us. And you can look at the cultures that these past people came from. They came from philosophies that were deeply ingrained with the Christian perspective and deeply ingrained with the Greco-Roman philosophies. Right now we're in a world where the Greek and Roman traditions and Christian values are very much undermined or ignored in almost all aspects of life. And I think that this is a mistake. 
the thing that the Greeks and the Christians really brought to the table was striving towards virtue. And the Christian greatest virtue, of course, is love. The Greeks had a list from Aristotle that has different virtues that people can exhibit. And I think the reason why virtuous people tend, or at least people of virtuous societies tend to advance science and engineering and general productivity so much is that they don't cheat. Virtuous people don't take shortcuts. Virtuous people don't lie. They don't burn up all of that mental energy trying to cover up the last lie that they told. And virtuous people don't take bribes. Because these people don't exhibit vices, at least not to the degree that we do or more disrupted societies like, say, the late Roman Empire around, you know, 250 A.D., is that when you face challenges in life, you gradually build up your ability to be creative. It's sort of progressive overload for your mind. So if we dispense with virtue, we eliminate the progressive overload and we undermine our own ability to create. I don't think it's as dark as it seems, but I don't know how to change this with the way that society is currently structured. On a positive note, things are still pretty good now. There's, again, not huge numbers of people starving in the United States. There probably are people going hungry. But one thing with all societies that are built on Greek and Christian traditions that makes them so resilient is that they are very schismatic. And the thing about schismatic philosophies or worldviews is when things don't work out and groups of people go their different ways, you get a lot more creativity coming from various people. And it tends to create a lot of philosophical and technological advancement. And I think part of this is when you're operating in a smaller community, you're more accountable to the people around you. When you're more accountable to the people around you, it's more difficult for you to be corrupt. So for those people looking for change in the world, you might get it. It might not be the kind of change that you think, but I think it will take us to a more peaceful and prosper prosperous place. So thanks for stopping by and listening. I'll see you next time.